Well, obviously, I, I, you know, we wanted to win. We we came here with big dreams and hopes, and um, but at the same time, I, I, you know, I told the guys all I cared about was playing with courage, and and courage means, you know, because the first two times, I, you guys were, you guys saw it. Um, they didn't just beat us. They 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 just played with us and and did whatever they wanted, and. Um, you know, we showed them. We showed them the scores last night. We showed them. You know, so we, you know, we we just played with one of the best teams. I think could should be maybe the best team in the country. Uh, we played on a uh, turnaround of what 14, 15 hours, um, with with not a whole lot of prep, uh, with uh, playing a, a hard fought game last night, and uh, gave them everything we had. And you know, it's just uh, I've said it all along. I I didn't want the season to end because I think we're actually playing as, as you know, high level basketball. We could compete with anybody. We just showed it. Um, and, you know, but, you know, you hope you use this as a momentum going into the, to the next season. Um, you know, but it, it, it's, um, you know, it's just, I don't know what to say. I just, uh, I, I'm proud of them, happy for them. Appreciate Mike McGurl's uh, leadership. Um, appreciate that the, the group stayed together. They believed us, you know, and, and they got better. Somebody told us that from, I don't know which date it was, February 10th, February something from that date on, uh, we have the third best defensive efficiency, not just in the, not in the big 12, but in the country and in this last month or three weeks or something. And um, I mean, we gave a team that has three elite players, probably three NBA player guards, uh, they turned it over 21 times. And the first time we played them, Jared Butler had 13 assists. Tonight he has seven, seven turnovers. Um, and yet they're really good. You know, the Baylor's really good. Uh, but, you know, as I said, I, our guys, they were bought in. They, they executed. Um, we got it inside. Davion, we probably, you know, you always hope we were maybe a little better passing team. We had some foul trouble. Um, could have made a little bit of a difference uh, in the game, probably, I thought. But, um, you know, and then we didn't, when we turned them over, we did not always take advantage. Our points off of turnovers should have been more. Um, and especially we had, I don't know how many layups we missed. Uh, uh, you know, I just, two or three come to mind right away that, you know, if we get one of those to fall, uh, maybe the game's different. But, uh Proud of them, you know, the two freshmen, Davion, Nigel, uh, we said use it as motivation, not getting picked on any of those teams, not getting any recognition. I think they made a nice statement the last two days. Um, you know, days one, I just told him this morning, he had a tough task to play the, one of the toughest players in the country in vital. And I said, you're gonna have to match his energy. And I thought days one did that um, and gave, you know, with that, how hard he played, he gave us a chance. But, uh, you know, I'm proud of him, but obviously disappointed that it's ending and disappointing that maybe we could have had a little bit of a, uh, a miracle here and, and, and found a way to win and, and, and done something really, really special, but it didn't happen. Thank you, Coach. We'll go to questions. First one to Todd Lebo. Hey, Coach. I just wonder, you know, now that the year is over, what sort of a toll has this entire year taking on you professionally and as a coach, going through all the protocols and, and the losing, and how much excitement do you have now after the way you guys finished the year to get back at it? Well, there's no doubt. I think you talk to any coach in the country, and I, and I talk to a lot of guys. It, this has been hard. It's It's been stressful. It's been a challenge. Um, it's been hard on everybody. And, and you know, it's it, one, you, no one has had vacation. No one's been able to get away from it. Um, you know, that, you, you know, it, it's just your, your mental health, your well-being, uh, that, that puts even adds more stress to it. So, um, but, you know, as I said to you guys last night, uh, to me as a leader, it's about the players and, and helping them and being there for them. And no matter how bad it got or what we had to deal with, I had to be there to lead them and help them and, and keep them believing and giving them hope and, and, and giving them love. And, and that's, that's what we tried to do. Um, uh, you know, last night about 
2 a.m. I was cramping, um, <laughs> literally, and uh, it's it's it 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 wears you out. But I got up this morning ready to play, and ready to coach. And um, I thought our guys did the same thing. They were they were they were really composed and ready to compete at a high level today. And so I appreciate them. Um, you know, as far as I, I said before, I told them three weeks ago, and we hadn't won a game in a while. I said, I don't want the season to end because I saw the improvement coming. And they probably looked at me like, I, this dude's crazy. And I, I, I said, guys, I, I, I see it coming. I see what's happening. I see how we're making the, the strides. We, we've actually been together. We've had practice. Um, you understand defense, all that stuff. And you know, and I, I just told him now again, I, I wish the season wasn't over, but uh, now use this as a motivation. Use this as, uh, uh, you know, you just you play against some of the best players in the country. Do you want to be like them? Now you got to put in the time because they, those guys were good players three years ago, but they weren't like this. And, uh, you know, if you want to be like that, it's now it's the hard work. This is the, this is your time, the next five months to get better. And uh, you know, I gave them a dream and vision for next year, where I expect them to be. Hopefully, they want to be there. Uh, next question to John Kurtz. Hey Bruce, the, the play at the end of the game with Nigel, where he he throws the ball up trying to get a foul. Just what what was your perspective on that? Did you think? Well, I thought it was a loose there? ball, and they kind of bumped them. And I think you know, I guess he probably. Hindsight, he probably come down with it, get knocked over, and we get two free throws. But I think he thought, I'm going to just act like I'm shooting because um, it was a tussle for the jump ball. And, and you know, I they, they you know obviously they didn't make a call, any call at that point. And so it's, uh, you know, I'm not sure, you know, it, it obviously we're close, but, you know, there were, there were several plays like that. And obviously the foul trouble really hurt us as far as, you know, but our guys hung in there every time I thought, Gosh, we got foul trouble. We got mixed units. We got Rudy Williams. Got to give him a lot of credit because a few weeks ago he uh, he was struggling, and uh, it, the whole thing had taken a toll. And for him to come this weekend and, and play his butt off, um, I, I'm I'm happy for him and proud of him. Uh, you know, but uh, you know we it, it, the foul trouble definitely you know probably made a difference, I guess, in the game more than anything. You just mentioned there a second ago the stress of, of the season and how arduous really this has been at times. At this stage in your career, coming off of a season like that, is, is retirement anything that you mull over or consider in the off season? Uh, it's funny. My daughter asked me this the other day. She said, Dad, are you retiring? And uh, I said, no, why? And she said some, I don't know who it is, some dude on uh, – Social media said I was retiring, and I, I asked his name, and I, I never even heard of the guy, to be honest. And she deals with social media all the time because she's, she's in advertising. And she said he was verified or checked. I don't know what the heck that means. But I guess he must have a lot of people following him. So I don't know if he knows something that I don't know. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, I think I, I, I don't know. I, I, I love coaching. I love practice. I love being around the guys. I love their development. I think we've improved as much as any team in the country. Um, I think that, but we were so low, I guess we better have improved. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I love coach. I love being around players. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to next year. I, I can't wait. We'll give them a couple of weeks off and uh, hopefully we'll get back at it. Thanks Bruce, I appreciate it. Yep. Next question to Tim Fitzgerald. Hey, Coach, did you feel like for in parts of that second half, you were just hanging on for dear life? One foul call, one turnover just kind of seemed to tilt the balance? Yeah, I, I, I said I kind of thought, you know, there were several times where I thought, God, we're in trouble. And then it, you get nine, and then all of a sudden it's back to three or four or whatever. And, um, you know, it seemed like every time something went wrong against us, our guys responded and, and found a way to make a play. And, um, you know, some of those hustle plays, Dejuan, Selton, um, you know, this just 
you know, and we, and I, I thought we guarded pretty well, even though they shot 50%, but you turn them over 21 times. Those guys, those three guards are really good. It can make shots and plays and play off of each other pretty well. So, but, um, you know, I, I, I just kept hoping, wishing, praying, you know, hey, we're going to hang in there. And then all of a sudden, maybe something special is going to happen and we're going to find a way to win. But uh, it didn't happen. So, um, you know, I, it, you know, the credit to them, you know, we pushed them and they, they found a way to get us. You had two freshmen today combined for 36 points on 12 of 20 shooting. Uh, it's just vital to keep this group together, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, they, I, I, you know, I talked about, you know, Davey on what he, I text him after he didn't get any recognition. I, I thought Nigel really should have got recognition, even though Davion, I thought is, is, you know, he was uh, as consistent as any guy and, and played against some of the best uh, big guys in the, in the league and handled himself well. And, you know, they, Davion said, coach, it's fine. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, lot, lot to, you know, of time to prove things at K-State. We know how hard we've worked. We know um, what, what we've been through. And the kid has unbelievable heart for, you know, I was talking to Tom Gilbert about it last night after everything. It, it, the kid's amazing from where he's come and what he has in his life, his big heart and how he cares and how much he's improved. I mean, he, uh, that, he's done unbelievable. And then Nigel, the goat, you know, he's been through some stuff, but he's hung in there. And uh, he's a, I knew he was a good player. Um, you know, I just kind of talked with him after the press conference. and. You know, there's some things he knows he's got to get better, but you know, pretty pretty nice performance uh, on on national TV against the best best team in the country uh, for both those guys. Thank you, Coach. Uh, next question to Ryan Black. Hey, Bruce, you, you've already been asked a few questions about him, but just kind of given the quality of the opponent and the circumstances, was, was that – was uh, Davion's performance one of the best you've seen by true freshmen, like they give the quality of the opponent? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, it, it's impressive. It's, it's um, you know, for them. And, and even Selton, guys, is – you know, I told Selton last night, he has – you look at his stat line and he has – I don't know, I think it was nine points – five rebounds or seven rebounds, something like that, some assists. And he was uh, seven on the play hard, which is high for his year. If he doesn't miss the dunk and he doesn't miss a, he's got a dead layup and he's got three free throws. Now he's like, people are talking about him for, you know, being one of the best players. And so, and then his defense on some of these elite guards lately is, is changed our team. I mean, and we've told him that, you know, so um, all three of those guys have, uh, They've been, they've been, uh, they've made a lot of strides. They understand what it's about, and but uh, Davion was good, and Nigel was good, and and Selton obviously would like him to be a little better, but he's still, uh, you know, he's still done some things as a freshman that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I want to guard Davion Mitchell or Jared Butler or or, or Reeves or Nimhart or any of those guys, and he stepped up to the, stepped up and and done an unbelievable job. I know there's so many areas you can look at and say, well, if we'd just done this better, maybe this would have been the difference. But, I mean, you notice that, uh, that they committed 21 turnovers, and then you guys only got the 17 points off. Yeah, that, that was – I one. said that – yeah, I said that earlier. Probably just – and it's been a problem all year, um, just finishing in transition, making good decisions, finishing – making the right play. Um, you know, that's 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 been a – it's been something we haven't been great at. Um and uh, you know, definitely, hopefully, we can get get better at. But again, it's it's something that you didn't get to work on. You know, in the summer, you didn't get to work on. In the fall, you didn't even get to work on it once practice started because you didn't have people. It's hard to run fast break drills, or you know, even pressing drills or anything like that when you don't have ten people. So, um, you know, it it that was it, we just talked as a staff just for a minute ago while I was waiting, and I think that was probably the biggest thing. That and then we had a couple of layups at one time. Dejuan gets an unbelievable rebound, misses, rolls around. Selton grabs it, tips it in, doesn't go in, and then they go down and and make a tough shot. Uh, those are a couple of those little plays 
uh, could have been big difference maker in the game. And then last thing for me, Bruce, how much can you say about the performance in the first half that you guys are only down by two and uh, Mike and Nigel only combined for four points at that point? And, and, and foul trouble, and, and we're hanging in there just like, you know, Tim had mentioned, you just, you know, hanging on for dear life, but we kept doing it. And, and we kept, you know, again, our, our heart of our guys, their, their, their never quit attitude, um, you know, they, they came together as a group and they believed and they battled and they understand what it's about now. And um, that's a big turnaround from losing by whatever we lost by 40 or whatever it was a few weeks ago. Next question to, Ke uh, to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Bruce, just to be 100% clear here, your, your plan right now is to be back as Kansas State's coach next season, right? Yeah, I don't have I, – I mean, I don't know anything different. I don't know why I wouldn't, but uh, you know, I love K-State. I love coaching. I think I've – obviously, you know, we haven't won as many games the last two years as you always hope, but it's been a long time since they had won championships. And, uh, you know, it, to me, I, I – you know, somebody, a, a homeless guy yesterday when I was walking around the hotel, he said, hey, Coach Weber, you know, the difference between Kansas and Kansas State, Kansas reloads and you got to rebuild. And, uh, you know, it's like that homeless guy is pretty smart. And that's what, you know, I, I think we've, we've done that. We've done it the right way. Um, and I think we have a great nucleus. Hopefully this group is uh, – uh, you know, wants to stay together, and, and this, this gave them a lot of hope and, and drive and motivation, and we can continue moving forward. So um, I don't know, unless I don't know who started the rumor or how it started, but I don't know the dude's name that on social media, but obviously somebody must have said something to somebody. So maybe you started, Kels. I don't know. I, I did not start it, I promise. Oh, okay. I, uh, I did not. Um, like I said, just wanted to 100% get that out of the way. But looking ahead to next season, what would you say you guys either need to add or develop to take that next step and be quite a bit better? Well, the development is so important. And I've talked about them, uh, you know, to them about this. You know, just come, I, I've used Baylor as an example. How far Jalen Butler's come, how far Teague has come, how far Mitchell's come. Um, you know, though, and, and it's, you know, we, we didn't have a spring. We didn't have a summer. We didn't have limited fall. And now, you know, now you're going to have that chance. Each guy's got some things they got to work on. Um, that development is so important. And then obviously, if, um, you know, if, if we get other scholarships or something happens, um, you know, we, you know, we need to, you know, get somebody that, you know, I, I love who you know, the guys we have coming in, but, you know, we might need something, you know, another guy or two just to see passing is something that, uh, Passing is something that could be, get definitely get better if we and and then I you know we've made some shots lately, uh, but you know shooting and passing are two things that uh, that we could definitely improve on. There's no doubt. Uh, let's do one last question to Grant Flanders. Hey, coach. So we know you're coming back next year. Is your guy Mike McGraw coming back with you? Well, that's, you know, I, I, after, and I've talked to him all along and I just, um, I know he has three big dreams and goals. I know today wasn't, you know, I thought yesterday he was, his, his game was as balanced and his pace and so good. And, you know, tonight a little hectic, but, um, you know, I hope he does. He wants to, I think he wants to, but uh, he wanted to get the season done before he made the decision. I think he has a chance to take a, a nice big step and, um, you know, he, that's his, I know his goal is we've talked about it, uh, to be, you know, being a, a, a high level player and he's, he's got himself where he's competing with top kids in our league who are the top players in the country. And now can he take a, another step? Uh, you know, so I hope so. Uh, but, but, you know, until he tells me, I'm definitely coming back. I know he's talked about to our guys about different majors and getting a master's and some of that stuff. So I guess that's a, a positive sign uh, right now that he's thinking about it. And then obviously, uh, you know, there's still some time before guys can decide what's going on, but how big is 
you know, the last stretch of the season just to keep the guys together and make sure that you bring that core back next year? Well, there's no doubt it, it's huge. I mean, it's, it's, I think Tim mentioned it a few weeks ago. It's, you know, you know it's part of college basketball. It's just, it's the part I, I, I feel sad about. I don't know if kids think they're just going to, it's going to help them in the long run to keep moving, you know, work on yourself and, and going to a new place is not going to always change it, but it's going to be part of college basketball. And, you know, it, it's, it's important. Every coach in the country is going to go through this every year. And, you know, we've been through the stress of COVID and all we've had to deal with. And now every year we're going to have to, we're going to have to figure that out. But again, use Baylor as a example, uh, those guys, you know, a couple of them redshirted, transfer red shirts, use that time to get better, mature, get tougher. And uh, now they're now they're special players. So hopefully our guys have that same thought process and motivation and and uh, we can we can all hang together. Thank you, coach. And a solid, nice end of the season. Thank you. Yes, it was. I, I'm really happy and proud of the guys.